I'll just give you an overview of what all we will be covering. So if some URX overview the usage, high level architecture, uh, login screen and user classifications, product classifications, uh, GOM. So this login screen user classification will anyways will cover as part of the GOM module only. Murex uh, language, when we say Murex language, what are the languages uh, we use while doing uh, development in Murex? Or, yeah. or since, since it is um, uh, a restrictive environment, they don't allow, uh, they have the, uh, created their specific set of languages for each, for some kind of modules like uh, front and back, uh, back uh, post and pre-date kind of thing where they they have their own set of languages that needs to be used and and, and uh, perform changes trade insertions um, static data that would be useful for you as part of your role in terms of um, how it comes how 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 to see what all upstreams it, it get feeds from then financial contract and packages so this is your trade uh, numbers and and how how do we identify a trade number versus what all uh, it can be club one or mm -hmm. many trades and when we do it what what kind of uh, grouping it, it creates in murex one stop processing which is used for our back office module our middle office teams back office teams and uh, Generally, wherever we have to put a validation or, or a kind of a maker checker, uh, we have to set set up a maker checker in place. So mm -hmm. one stop helps uh, in achieving those kind of requirements or those kind of controls. Pre and trace uh, post trade workflows. This again, this this would be somewhat uh, technical in nature, but not not that That's depth okay. in technical. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, perfect. Uh, then what are our workflows in terms of uh, when when we do a booking how does a trade uh, move within murex uh, and what are the status and how do these status change and uh, what are the how how do they identify whether a trade should move to the next step move it back or stay there similar to that settlement workflow so this is something when when trade has reached the back office part of it and then we are ready to do the settlement and the payment of that uh, uh, trade or a contract mxml exchange it is something which would be part of your uh, uh, post-trade language and this is uh, I would say a customized version of an XML language where Murex mm -hmm. has customized it uh, as per their uh, uh, to suit or, or to I would say better word than suit is to control uh, so that uh, others don't learn it in terms of their product perspective but, yeah. but it is a sort of XML only but they have created their classes and all uh, to make it restricted for the uh, public uh, market so data. It, it's just a derivative of XML. You said it's just a derivative of XML. That's a yeah? yeah, that's a derivative of XML. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Market data, what all, uh, where all we do receive market data, what kind of market data, and how does, yes. how do we check all those market data items? Fixings, uh, how do we get fixings? How do we fix a trade? Yeah. Uh, Data mart reporting. This is again something which is Murex terminology for reporting. How do yeah. you do this reporting? How do you generate reports out of Murex? So there's a separate module in itself which is data mart reporting. Uh, real life implementation scenarios walkthrough, uh, which I mentioned that I may, I may, this, this all would be something where at the end of the course when we will or maybe end of this uh, whole session uh, when we'll do this uh, maybe a full session on this uh, where i can mm -hmm. walk you through on, on uh, projects or programs which we run from scratch in terms of greenfield implementations uh, there could be something where uh, uh, i have an experience of doing some upgrades so i'll, I'll mm -hmm. just walk you through on on those Fantastic. And then question answer. Question answer. What we can do, we can keep it for every session also. Uh, mm -hmm. If if uh, you feel so, so we can keep uh, block some 15 to 20 minutes uh, for that, so that it it whatever we have gone through as part of the session, uh, we can do a quick recap of that, or or there may be some concerns or there may be some uh, some questions uh, which you want to ask, so that we can uh, keep a buffer 15 minutes uh, at the end oh. of the each day session. I'll, 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 ask, I'll ask questions throughout. So <laughs> that's, 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 I think that's much better because otherwise I'll also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got lots of questions. Uh, yeah, um. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so then 
as we said so for today's agenda it was introduction we already have training overview and expectations in and um, it is something that i have prepared that will not be able to share screen and see how how does a real time application looks like i'll mm -hmm. i'll try to gather screen snippets wherever possible if not during okay. the session maybe for the next session i'll i'll, I'll ensure that uh, wherever i could get the screen snippets from the previous session discussions i'll i'll it'll bring okay. it them for you and then we can uh, uh, reserves first 10 minutes to go through those screen snippets and uh, just correlate or, or related to uh, what we did completed in the last session okay okay, uh, okay. Uh, directly coming to the murex so so i'll read somewhere but for high level i I'll, I'll just quickly like to cover so uh, when we say murex so murex uh, some people call it as, as it's just a trading platform some banks use it uh, for risk management dedicated for risk management as a central repo risk repository for for uh, their applications but murex is a generally speaking murex is a uh, is a industry wide platform that's uh, 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 that is used by banks by asset management companies uh, i have seen pension funds using it i have seen uh, some life insurance organizations or, or then again uh, pension houses uh, using the murex to support their front uh, to back to risk to back when we say ftbtr it's like front to back to risk uh, so uh, yeah. where majority of the banks uh, when they go big bang on murex what they say is like okay i'll we, we are planning to decommission our x number of systems uh, and we'll implement murex as a as a one standard solution or one standard platform so that it helps in reporting it helps in uh, managing our risk exposures and then also it becomes uh, something which is uh, from training perspective also it becomes an only one platform that we have to train our uh, team members or the business staff or the end users on it so it's an indic uh, as it says it's a integrated power full platform for trading risk management processing across asset classes and when when we say murex provides an end-to-end -end processing to enable trader trades to enter into a single system and transform from one business area to another so uh, uh, in short what we are saying here is so murex has a capability where it can receive trade it, it has a capability uh, to cap capture the trade uh, on uh, on its own platform which is its front office uh, module or e-trade pad that we call so it has, it has a various uh, trade capture screens which are used by traders then it, it also has an um, capability to receive trades uh, which are which are coming from uh, different front office systems so there could be a bank or, or, or a financial institution could be using an a legacy uh, system or maybe they they have their in-house systems uh, to capture the trades where the uh, traders are already uh, i would say equity uh, they they know that they they, they are hands-on onto those system and they don't want to uh, shift to murex so it, yeah, murex anyways so, has a capability sorry Chris, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, excuse me i'm gonna skip to the bottom on this so they are when they do software as a service do you know so they're java based which is fine when they do software as a service, do you know if they're based on Oracle or, sorry, apologies, on AWS or Azure or Google? Do you know what underpins their software as a service as to, model? Do they, do they allow all? Okay, so as of now, um, answer is they are working. So Murex was a very integrated uh, kind of a tool within. So now they have call, uh, started calling them as a software as a service. And they they have a collaboration with uh, with Amazon Web Services. And okay. some of the modules have already been built and tested. Some clients are already using it. It's, it's very new uh, that they have started this uh, uh, as a uh, SaaS service, uh, services and, and uh, they have a collaboration with AWS and going sure. some of the modules are still not available but they are they are I think uh, they are integrating it in, in some and uh, uh, public events like SAP, uh, SAPOS and all uh, they, they are declaring it that they will be moving all the services or all the modules uh, on uh, cloud services from Amazon yeah so one of the questions I need to ask them when 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 I need them is the roadmap. What's the roadmap for actually doing that, yes, right? Yes. I want to do I think that would be helpful for you because as of now, it would be a distributed kind of thing where some of these uh, modules would be available. Some they say yeah. that you have to buy a, a 
as, as a client uh, or a thin care a thin client only and, and support it on the on the on your systems yeah 